I want to start the sermonette by just sim simply going directly to my main passage. Uh, this passage will set the tones for the rest of the comments that I'll make during the sermonette time. So if you will, turn with me to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, and we're going to read <clears throat> verses 36 through 40. Matthew 26, 36 through 40. Then cometh Jesus, I'm reading this in the King James Version. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And he saith unto the disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. In verse 36, excuse me, verse 38. And then he saith unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And he saith unto Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Could you not watch with me one hour? The title of this sermonette is, Will Ye Tarry Here and Watch With Me for One Hour? Will ye tarry here and watch with me one hour? Brethren, I submit to you that the sermonette, in this sermonette, that we are still a body of people that are called to a life of tarrying one for another. There are a few words in the Greek translated tarry, and they all are closely related to one another. The meaning of the word tarry, or the word tarry in the Greek is meno, meno, that is M-E-N-O. Specifically, this word translated in Matthew 26, meno, can mean a few things. And again, they're all very related to one another. The meaning is to remain, abide. It can mean not to depart, to continue, to be present, to be held, kept continually, to last and endure, to remain as one. And my favorite meaning, and I think it actually captures what was going on in this particular situation, is to wait for to wait on someone, essentially to not leave that person behind. And that is the crux of what I want to get across to the audience today is Christ, the Father, are all about not leaving anyone behind. He was asking his disciples to not abandon him in his greatest hour of need. He referred to these individuals not long before this particular situation unfolded as his friends. So he was asking his friends to remain with him as one, to last with him and endure, to wait on him and to not leave him behind. Can we not say that Christ expects nothing less of us today in our feelings and our attitudes toward his brethren? We are to tarry for one another. We are to wait on one another and we are to leave no one behind. Later in another place, he says to Peter, 
when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. That's in Luke 22, 32. We tarry for one another, we abide with one another, we endure for one another, we pray without ceasing for one another. We celebrate with one another. We mourn with one another as God has intended in his church. There are many in this room that are caretakers of someone, be it a ch child, or an adult, or an aging parent, or, or maybe even an extended family member. You are tarrying and you are carrying that individual. This is right and this is good. It is the Spirit of God that gives you the strength and your belief in God the Father and his son that allows you to be able to do for those individuals. And if you can't physically do for an individual, God expects the prayer that you give to be without ceasing. That is tarrying with another person. That is tarrying for one another. In Romans 12, 15 and 16, it says rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep and be of the same mind toward one another. Ephesians 4.32 tells us to be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. These are the examples that we have been set. As the Apostle Paul emphasizes more than once to the Galatians, he writes, bear one another's burdens so you fulfill the law of Christ. That's Galatians 6.2 if you want to write it down. Again, to the Romans, he admonishes in Romans 15.1 and 2, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Not to please ourselves, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. I wanna bring this message to a close by simply reminding us to recall our, our Messiah's hour of need in which he implored his friends, his kinsmen, if you will, his deeply loved brethren to remain with him, to endure with him, to watch, to wait, to weep with him, to strengthen him, and above all, to not leave him behind. You know, in the book of Nehemiah, it ends with him pleading at least three times for God to remember him for the good that he'd done. Apparently, he was covering all his bases. That's fine. We want God to remember us for the good we've done for one another. We cannot go back and be with Christ in his hour of need. He has overcome. He sits at the right hand of the Father. But we can, and we do, and we will continue. We can be here and now tarrying with his brethren, your brethren, my brethren, 
And we ask ourselves the question, and we will answer it in the affirmative, will we or will ye, as the scripture says in the King James, tarry here and watch with me even for one hour? 